Hi everyone. In this video I want to show you how to create a procedural floor in Modo. For this tutorial, I created two shapes created from polyline. You can also create them yourself using the pen tool, choosing the type polyline. Let's hide them so they don't bother us. Now let's create an empty mesh and name it floor rectangle. Connect the rectangle node to it and change the type to polyline. Now let's create an empty mesh. Rename it to floor mesh and connect the cube node to it. This will be the base for our floor where we can set the number of segments on the z axis. Now we need to take out the size channels and connect them to the sizes of the rectangle node. Now we need to separate our segments from each other. For this we use the edge split node. Set the gap value to 100 um. Before the next operation, we must save the selection of our edges in order to use them in the next operation. For this we use the assign selection set node. Change the selection type to edge and name this selection previous. Now we can add segments along the x axis. For this, we will add an axis slice node and set the number of segments. Now we need to randomly move our polygons to make it look like parquet. For this, we use the jitter node. Turn off the offset along the y and z axis. Set the offset value along the x axis and enable rigid translate so that whole parts of the polygons are shifted, and not their elements. As you can see now our polygons are not all placed inside our rectangle. Let's fix it. To do this, we will take out the offset channel along the x-axis, from the jitter node. Now let's add the add math node and duplicate it by pressing shift plus d. Multiply this by 2 and change it to multiply. Connect it this way. It will increase the original size of the plane given our X offset and our polygons will be inside our rectangle object. Now when we change the offset value our polygons will completely fill our rectangle object. Let's add another y-axis offset. Change the selection type to edge. Turn off the offset on the x and z-axis, and activate rigid translate. At the moment, the polygons are completely displaced, and not the edges that we saved earlier. Let's fix this. Add a select by selection set node and in the name field enter the name of our previously saved selection. It didn't work because we need to invert this selection. Now it works as we need it. Let's crop the polygons that go beyond the rectangle object. For this we use the axis drill node. Connecting to the node axis drill, our polyline rectangle. Looks great now it's more like the floor. Let's continue. Now we need to split our segments again. For this we use the edge split node again. Now connect the gap value with the previous value of the edge split node. Now we can control indentation from a single node. Let's add random rotation to our elements. For this we will add another jitter node. Set the offset distance and activate rigid rotate so that the offset affects only the rotation of the elements. Let's move this node above the edge split node. Now we can control the random rotation of the elements. Let's create a UV. For this we will add a create UV map node. Change the projection type to Atlas.
In order to preserve the corners while smoothing the polygons, we will add an edge bevel note. In some cases, we need to offset the edges only along the edges. For this we can use select by border. Thus we will select only the edges of the polygons. Now let's add thickness to our polygons. For this we use the thicken note. Now we can control the thickness of our elements. Let's round the corners of our floor. For this we will connect the vertex bevel node to the rectangle object. Set the value to inset and set the required number of segments for our rounding. Let's make some more cutouts by adding procedural text to our scene. Let's write our text and choose the font we need. Let's change the position of our text and change the type to Bezier. Now let's add a freeze node to turn our text into a polyline. Here we can also optimize our polyline text by adjusting the curve refinement angle parameter. You can see that the number of points on our text decreases depending on the angle parameter. You can also use the vertex merge node to optimize the text, as some fonts have problem areas and too many points. With the vertex merge node, you can connect nearby points. Now let's cut our text out of our floor. Let's add a curve boolean to our rectangle object. I will move these nodes a little. The order is also very important. Let's connect our text to the curve boolean node. Now change the operation mode to subtract. Looks great. Now at any time you can change the text that will be cut from the floor surface. Let's continue cropping our surface. Add the polylines we created earlier and add them to the node editor. Let's add another node, curve boolean, and connect our polylines to it. This is the way we can cut and switch cutouts from our floor. Let's smooth our surface for this we use the set polygon type node. Since we've cropped the polygons, we now have non-connected points, and we're having problems like this. Let's fix this. Let's add a triangulate node to our floor. This will connect our points. In order to connect non-connected vertices with edges, we need to select polygons that have more than four vertices. Add selection operator polygon. Now let's add the logic modifier channel. Pull out the channel vertex count and connect to input A to the logical node. Change the operation to A is not equal to B. And in the value of B, enter the number 4. This is how we selected polygons with more or less than 4 vertices. Let's drop it below and enable the set polygon type node. Now all vertices are connected and smoothing works without problems. Let's add a subdivide node. This will make the smoothing more even and our mesh will only consist of quad polygons. Now I will show you the material that I previously set up that we will apply to our floor. Add a material tag node and enter the name of our material there. The material folder must have the polygon tag specified. That is, the name of our material that we wrote in the material tag node. Otherwise the material will not be assigned to our object. Now I will show you the network of our created nodes so that you can see it in more detail. Hide the objects we don't need. 
Let's select the rectangle object and resize it a bit to make sure it works. We can also tweak other offset parameters a bit, etc. We can change the number of segments. Let's see what our render looks like. I think the result is quite realistic. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Ciao.